Well, good morning, Jim Sunderworth coming to you from the swing. It's so, just so refreshing just to know that each day I just get to come and share with you and and um, and, and how, the, how neat it is that the Lord gives us thoughts and gives us things that we can share. And we've been talking about, of course, um, how that Moses had brought the children out of Israel and how now they were uh, traveling and they were traveling from the, um, the, the mount, you know, and, and now they're going toward the place where God is giving them but and we've gone through the fact that that the first time they came you know they didn't uh, they had fear and so they're 40 years uh, there was 40 years that they had um, had wandered in the wilderness and that the, the older generation died it's kind of interesting to see how God has worked this whole thing out how the new generation came on and we've talked about the fact that even they I mean can you believe it they were so frustrated anyway so they're heading heading up the the the, the Canish Barnea again they have to go up through uh, the land of uh, Moab and they wouldn't let him come through and um, uh, so what what happened was they had to go down south again and as they went south, um, they started complaining. It's like kids in the back seat. You know, are we there yet? There's a long time going back down to the Red Sea and then back up another way so they wouldn't um, hit the, the people that wouldn't let them come through their land. I, I, I'll have to check that when Moab, uh, they did meet Moab later. But, but anyway, they had a nation that would let them go through. Well, what happened was they started complaining again. And the people started complaining and frustrated. And they kept saying... Um, <sighs> brought us out here to die. Well, they didn't bring him out there to die. They brought him out here to prosper them. They just wasn't trusting the Lord. Anyway, so here we go. And we talked about yesterday, we talked about the fact that God was so frustrated with him. He allowed the serpents to come into their camp and these fiery serpents would uh, bite them and then they they would die if they didn't get some help. And, and they began to cry out to Moses and Moses went before the Lord and God told him to put there in chapter 21, uh, verse four of a uh, numbers, he said, put a brass snake upon a pole and uh, put it up. And if people come and look at that brass snake, they will be healed. And so they began to preach. They began to preach, get out there and see the serpent. And they did. And people were healed. Now, Jesus, we talked about this. Um, we started talking about it before yesterday. And then I wanted to go to it today. In John 3, uh, Jesus meets a, a Pharisee, a Nicodemus, who is a Pharisee of Pharisees. He's uh, well known, but he he really believes in Jesus and he wants to meet him, but he wants to meet him um, at night. So here it comes that in that John, in uh, the third chapter, it says, there was a man named uh, Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night. Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher from God and no one can do signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus said unto him, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Man, he just rears right, right back and just sit, lays it right out for Nicodemus. you got to be born again. Well, Nicodemus said, How can a man be born again if he is old? How can he enter the second time to his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel at what I say to you. You must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Born of the Spirit, I mean, there's an effect. There's an effect by, the, you know, there's wind. You can't see the wind, but you can see its effect. Now, Jesus, Nicodemus said to him, he said, how can these things be? Jesus said, are you a teacher in Israel and know not these things? Most assuredly, I say unto you, uh, we speak what we know and we testify what we have seen and do not receive um, our, and you do not receive our, uh, receive our witness. If I have told you your earthly things and you do, do not believe, how can I, be, how will you believe if I show you heavenly things? But he, then he goes on and he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know, John three sixteen that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so then he, he begins to talk to him, um, about the fact that as the, as the, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And we're going to talk about that real soon. What does it really mean that as that serpent? You see, Jesus became, the Bible says, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You've sinned, I've sinned. We've come short of the goodness. The glory of God is his goodness, and we've all come short of that. But he said, the wages of that sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, 
I will draw all men to me. So what's the, what is it all about? It's about this. Jesus Christ. He is the source. He's the truth. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Think about that today. You're free because of what he's done for us. You're free because you dare believe and looked upon Jesus. That's a beautiful thing. We'll continue this tomorrow, okay? We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.